Welcome back to Plug Life Television. Today we're going to be covering an EV mistake that's so easy to make that even top motoring journalists and car salespeople make this all the time. What's the difference between kilowatts and kilowatt hours? What does each term mean? When is it appropriate to use each one? And I'm also going to throw in an electrochemistry term that's really useful for measuring and describing just how hard a battery is being pushed. The terms kilowatt and kilowatt hours are often interchanged when describing electric vehicle motor power and battery capacity, even by motoring journalists. But which one is the right one to use and when? Kilowatt refers to instantaneous power, whilst kilowatt hour refers to cumulative energy. As such, kilowatt is used to define motor performance and charger speed, whilst kilowatt hour refers to battery size. When referring to motor power and performance, kilowatts can be thought of like horsepower, when thinking about battery size or energy delivered during a charge, kilowatt hours can be thought of like litres or gallons of fuel. Let's look at kilowatts in more detail. This refers to power, which is equal to current in amps, multiplied by voltage in volts. For example, if a charge point is on a 230 volt power supply and can supply a maximum of 32 amps, then the maximum power of the charge point is 230 volts multiplied by 32 amps, which is 7,360 watts. To convert watts to kilowatts, just divide by 1,000. This gives us a maximum charger power of 7.4 kilowatts. Kilowatt hours refers to energy. This is equal to power in kilowatts multiplied by time in hours. As we've seen from the power formula, this means that energy in kilowatt hours is equal to current multiplied by voltage multiplied by time. Take a Nissan LEAF with a 24 kilowatt hour battery pack and a 6.6 .6 kilowatt onboard charger. If we plug this into a charge point to give it a full charge from empty, then the time taken for a full charge will be approximately equal to 24 kilowatt hours divided by 6.6 .6 kilowatts, which is 3.6 hours. In reality, a full charge will take slightly longer than this, as the charging power throttles back as the pack nears 100% state of charge. See episode 4 for more details. Alternatively, if we put the car on a 50kW rapid charger for a 15 minute or quarter of an hour top up, and got the full 50kW charging speed for the entire duration of the charge, then the total energy delivered to the car would be equal to 50kW multiplied by quarter of an hour which equals 12.5 kilowatt hours. Kilowatt hours are regularly used to describe full battery systems, but the individual cells that make up a battery pack are always described by their manufacturers in ampere hours. This is a cumulative unit of capacity, which is equal to current in amps multiplied by time in hours. But why do cell manufacturers provide the size of their cells in ampere hours rather than watt hours? The reason becomes more obvious when we see a cell being charged from empty to full at constant current. The cell's voltage constantly varies during the charge, increasing from its minimum to its maximum value. Since power equals current times voltage, this means that the instantaneous power of the cell is constantly changing during charging or discharging, even if the current is constant. It is much easier to express the capacity of the cell in ampere hours, since this removes a variable, voltage, while still providing a meaningful value to assess the size of the cell. So, if we take a Samsung SDI 94 ampere hour cell used in the second generation of the BMW i3, this can provide a constant current of 94 amps for one hour before it's completely drained. This brings us to a neat unit used to describe the cycling of batteries, the C rate, which is the instantaneous speed at which a cell is being charged or discharged with respect to its capacity. Even the best battery electrochemists take a while to get their heads around this one, but it's such a useful unit when you get the hang of it. The C rate is equal to the current being applied to or drawn from the cell in amps, divided by the capacity of the cell in ampere hours. The C rate's unit is technically 1 over hours, or hours to the power of minus 1, but is always written as C. 1 divided by the C rate gives the amount of time in hours that it would take to fully charge or discharge the cell if the C rate is kept constant. For example, if the Samsung SDI cell was discharged from full at 94 amps, 
then the C rate would be equal to 94 amps over 94 ampere hours, which is 1C, which would take an hour to fully discharge the cell. If the discharge current was 47 amps, the C rate would be 47 over 94, which is 0.5C. The amount of time taken to fully discharge the cell would be 1 over 0.5, which is 2 hours. If the discharge current was 141 amps, then the C rate would be 141 over 94, which is 1.5C. The amount of time taken to fully discharge the cell would be 1 over 1.5, which is 2 thirds of an hour, or 40 minutes. The C rate that a battery is running at can also be described in terms of power in kilowatts divided by energy in kilowatt hours. This is because power is equal to current times voltage and energy is equal to capacity times voltage. Therefore, the voltages cancel out since the power is being divided by energy. As the C rate that a battery is cycled at increases, the heat that it generates also increases and so the thermal management system in the car has to work harder to keep the battery cool. Look again at the Nissan LEAF with a 24 kilowatt hour battery and a 50 kilowatt maximum rapid charging speed. If we rapid charge the car at full power, the battery will be subjected to a C rate equal to 50 kilowatts divided by 24 kilowatt hours, which is 2.1 C. Now let's compare this to a Tesla Model S with an 85 kilowatt hour battery pack and a maximum supercharging speed of 120 kilowatts. If we supercharge this car at maximum power, the C rate that the battery will be subjected to is 120 kilowatts divided by 85 kilowatt hours, which is 1.4 C. This tells us something interesting. The Tesla Model S may draw a higher charging power than the LEAF, an absolute value, but the LEAF's battery is subjected to a much higher C rate, which is a relative value. Therefore, Tesla's supercharging speeds aren't so scary after all. There we go, I hope that's made it somewhat easier to understand the difference between kilowatts and kilowatt hours. If you just remember that one kilowatt hour is the amount of energy that's required to power a one kilowatt device for exactly one hour, and take it from there, it should be easy enough to remember. And I hope that the C rate term has also been interesting and useful for understanding how hard your car's battery is being pushed, whether you're cruising on the motorway, rapid charging, or under harsh acceleration, that sort of idea. Anyway, that's more than enough for today. Take care, I'll see you again soon for another episode of Plug Life Television.